Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Thank you so much for joining us for another amazing interview. Now, as you know, if this is your first one, maybe you've missed some. If not, make sure you set your notification bell and you come back same day, same time, every week. Today, we have an amazing guest, Miss Deidre. Deidre, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How about you? I'm doing great. And I wanted to, with these, I don't give out the bio because we're going to spend the next 30 minutes getting to know you and learning more about you and what you do. So, and we'll, we'll touch on everything you do. We, we all have that heart. All of the viewers have a heart for service and growth. So I thank you for joining us here. And I want to ask you, now, where are you based? Um, L.A. based. Okay, L.A., like Los Angeles? Yes. Okay, I always have a different level of respect for people from the L.A. area, the Bay Area, and New York. It just, me being a Florida boy, those places is like larger than life to, to us because we just see it in the movies all the time. So were you born and raised there? No, I'm actually born and raised in Chicago. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Wow. So you just went from <laughs> one, you know, famous city to another. And now Chicago got its own story, too. Now, how or, or when was it that you bumped into me online? So it was right around 2020 during COVID. I was in the midst of a separation of a long marriage over 30 years and I was going through some depression and I said, Lord, you got to help me because I can't go through this every day. And I put in how to break a soul tie and you popped up and I had never heard of you before. And I started listening to you and I was like, Mm, this is real good. Like, he know what he's talking about. I've been through all of this stuff. But then there were some things that I didn't know because I didn't grow up with any brothers. Father wasn't really there. And, you know, it was easy listening to you because you didn't curse. And I didn't even know you was a Christian till after a while that I had been listening to you. So it really helped me. You really helped me to really come through out of that depression. Mm, mm, that is something. That is something. And one thing you said that, you know, for the people watching who do YouTube as well is you found the video because it was titled How To. And that's something. And I, I meet a lot of people through YouTube. And I'm like, how you found me? How you bought the session? They're like, I found you on YouTube. I searched this you know, on YouTube or Google, and then your video came up. I'm like, wow, that's crazy how that works. So, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm I'm glad that it happened, you know, sooner than later. And because I think I've been on YouTube from 2011. And so, yeah. And, but I mean, 2020, that still works. Now, as far as day to day, like your heart, your passion, you know, what do you feel drawn to? What what have you been focusing on as far as your, your work of service? Mentoring people. So I'm in ministry too. I've been a uh, ordained pastor and I got my honorary doctorate degree also out here in California in 2021. I've been in ministry for since 20, 2001. Yeah, it's been about 23 years. So a little bit about my story. I was saved from crack cocaine, um, got delivered. I had been addicted for 13 years and God delivered me, filled me with the Holy Spirit. And I just went on from there and he began to raise me. So my heart is really, I have a heart for people and a lot for homeless people, but just one of my main focuses is women in domestic violence in any type of abusive relationship. So I actually help people. I've helped a few people escape out of those relationships. And so th that's my heart. My heart is for the people, of course, being a minister. You know, I'm called, I didn't choose this. I was called to it. And so um, mentorship is where I 
really want to keep my focus. I mean, I do taxes, but I more so deal with people. And I just, I've been doing it for years. Mm. And now addiction, that is something that a lot of people struggle with. And, you know, I work with clients who are getting life coaching, but they're also getting you know, therapy or working with a psychiatrist and things of that nature. And they deal with addiction. But me personally, I do not understand it at all. But I've seen it growing up, but I still couldn't understand it because I feel like it's one of those things that you don't understand unless you have lived it and experienced it. And so for you, what where were you what city was it that you know you was introduced you know to the addiction like was it chicago or la it was chicago it was chicago my hometown so i was uh 15 years old um so yeah i just had a whole fast life 14 years old i had my first child who was murdered two years ago um and at 15 i started you know, I got introduced to cocaine. It was cocaine before it was crack. So it was back in the eighties and just curious. That's all. Just, just want to know what it was about as if I couldn't see how it was destroying people's lives. So just, I think just naive being young, curious. And I took that one hit and I was hooked and I was hooked for 13 years. And that was in the streets of Chicago. And so when you get addicted and then they, you know, they start cooking it up and start calling it back then ready rock. Then it went from ready rock to crack. And so, um, you know, it is crazy because that particular drug has you chasing for more. And I have to honestly say I did a lot of things that I'm not proud of that I didn't think that I would ever do in life. And um, I was just in a real bad state, but God delivered me. I always believed in God. I always kind of went to church. So the last, even I was in church for the last five years of that addiction, I was going to church on a regular basis. And so I just, yeah, I was just praying, Lord, don't let me die and go to hell. Because I, you know, the more I learned, the more I began to understand that I could not continue on this road. And then I didn't like it. it you know, some people enjoy getting high. The thing about with me, I was addicted, but I hated it because as soon as I did it, I was paranoid, you know, and just tripping out. It, it was crazy. It, it was absolutely yeah, it, it was something else, but it was on the streets of Chicago on the south side. And uh, I remember walking the streets two or three o'clock in the morning looking for another hit and praying to God to please have mercy on my soul. Mm. And you know what? I feel like you were one of the specifically chosen ones. Like I, I, I always look at the work of God as like us being in an army. And we going in spiritual warfare and we got frontliners, those who are bold and who are going to get up there. And then, you know, you got their support behind them. But when you think of that front line, of course, God's front line is going to be millions of people because we we in spiritual warfare in the whole world. But the beauty of it is you can reach somebody and speak to somebody where I would never understand that. And I may be like, you know, why you just can't quit? You know, why are you doing that? Why you don't find something else? But I don't understand addiction and what it feel like, not just what the books say, because a therapist could got it in the book. But even that therapist can't really fully understand if they've never been hooked. And so they could give you a treatment plan. So I feel like God intentionally raises up people when he takes them from that Saul to Apostle Paul to say, this person got the experience, not just the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, but the real life experience. Now, I want to ask you, because I'm always curious about this. 
for people who right now are, we got teenagers that's watching this and young adults watching it. Who introduced you to it? Was it a homegirl? Was it a boyfriend? Was it a family member? So it was a guy that I was, he, it was my, at the time, it was my boyfriend's mother. Yeah, so the mother was addicted. And I was kind of already, at that time, like that was about 88. So I was already kind of like grown, but not grown. And I say that because I had a baby and I was kind of like doing my own thing. Now, the baby's father at the time, who later became my husband, he was in jail. So I was with another guy and it was his mother that I actually asked her to let me try it. And so at first she was initially like, no, you don't need to try this. And I was like, well, let me try it. Let me just see what it's about. And so she let me try it. That was, that was it. Mm. And now, I mean, just hearing a little bit, we didn't heard. We only, we only heard 30 seconds of your story and I'm already seeing the movie. I'm like, this is like a, you know, a Netflix series because it's a lady. Have you ever watched the show Snowfall? I've seen it once or twice, yes. Go watch it tonight or this weekend. It's it's I can't remember if they put it on Netflix or if it was on one of the other streaming ones. Or it could be up on YouTube. Now somebody got it up there. But it is a young lady who is probably around 18 or so. In real life, she is a pretty young lady. She looked like she could be your daughter in real wow. life. And then in the show, before she got hooked on the cry, she looked like she could be your daughter. She's a pretty young lady, black lady. And she get hooked on it. And next thing you know, she, she like you said, two, three in the morning, she looking for it. She she doing all kind of stuff for it. She, and it just like, what you telling me, I'm like, man, I, I think somebody heard your story and <laughs> writing it in there. But I know there's people with that story, but we don't get to see very often the other side of it. And so you look, healthy, whole, healed, redeemed. So so talk to me about talk to me about that portion of it. Like how did you start to wean off of it and and then how did you get that that break to where you say I'm going forward and I'm not going to look back. Yeah, so um like I said the last 5 years of addiction I was already in church. So I was, when I wasn't getting high, I was listening to the word. And then when I was at home, you know, I got, I done been delivered from a whole lot of other stuff other than crap. Okay. You know, I used to smoke weed, drink. Oh, yeah, it's a whole lot. But what happened was I just got tired of being tired. Like I lost myself. I did not like who I was and you know, the stuff that I had done stoop to was just unbelievable to me. So what happened was because I was always praying anyway, I started reading the Bible and the more I started reading the Bible, the more I was looking at my life and I was like, okay, you know, I got to be delivered. So I was reading the word and I was believing the word. And so what happened was I read where the Bible say, after the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall receive power. Now, you know, growing up, we used to think that the Holy Ghost was people shouting in the church. You used to think, oh, they caught the Holy Ghost. Well, I come to find out that that wasn't the real Holy Ghost. The real Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, however a person wants to put it, is the Spirit of God coming in, giving you power sustaining power transformation so how i got to that point i was on three drug dealers and one of the drug dealers uh at the time me and my husband we owed him over three thousand dollars 
lives. I was really afraid for my life. And I asked God to just come in and deliver me and change me and fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I said, Lord, if you would fill me, then I would run for you like I ran for the devil. And I meant that because I needed to get out of this and I needed power because I didn't have no power. I needed power to stay out the dope house. And so what happened was I went to church one night. One of the ladies invited me to the prayer the next morning. They started ha having at 830 in the morning. I went the day I went to the prayer. The Lord delivered me and filled me. I was on that altar for hours, but when I left there, I was a new woman and I never looked back. It was just like that. It was like cold turkey. I went from being hooked on crack to having the, I can't help it to totally cold turkey, never picked up a pipe again. And to maintain that it was a lot of fasting and prayer, but actually the desire was God. He took the desire. It's just the power of God. It just was a miracle that the Lord gave me. And I just started running for my life and just, just, I mean, gorging in the word, just, 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 I mean, just hours at a time, just not eating. I mean, I think I was fasting every week for three days with nothing for about two years. And so it, I, I can only give God the glory for him doing what he did in my life. Now, I do understand it took me not going back to that. And I think that's the problem. Sometimes people, they come out, but then they go back in. And so the way to maintain your deliverance, you got to do something different, you know? And so when God told me, don't go to the store down the street, even though I was like, I'm just going to get a loaf of bread. But he knew why he was telling me not to go to the store down the street. So when I just obeyed what he said, it worked out for me. And mm -hmm. I just, it's just a constant thing, constant prayer, constant seeking, constant obey. And you look up and you got a year in, you look up 10 years later, here I am, 23 years later, never went back to crack cocaine, never went back to weed, never went back to smoking. Mm hmm and in that, because you say you and your husband owe over mm -hmm. 3000 So was your husband using then? And then when you came out, what, what was his life looking like? Yes. So, yes, we end up, we was getting high together. We got saved together because we was both in church together. We got saved together. But what happened was probably maybe a couple of months later, my husband got discouraged because he didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost yet. And he got discouraged and he went back to drugs. So, and I just, you know, I just stayed with him. You know, um, I loved him, you know, dearly. And I used to, for the first year or two, I felt like the Lord was compelling me like to go after him, to try to stop him when he would get ready to go out there. And I would, you know, be like, you ain't got to do that. You know what the Lord did for me. He could do it for you. Like it was that type of thing going on. And then after that time frame, it was like, I felt the lifting. So I, I didn't do that anymore. I just used to pray. I used to pray for him. I tried to encourage. It was rough though. It 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 was rough. It was, yeah. Mm. Mm. I could only imagine. I could only imagine having had struggled with it yourself. And then the person you loving more than anybody in the rural is struggling with it and they going back to it. If you have a bad day, that's a perfect day for a relapse if the person you with is using. And mm -hmm. so that for me it is kind of it is kind of hard to believe that you went cold turkey, you know. So when you had that Holy Ghost experience, you didn't have another two, three times that you're on a bad day, you crying, family member died. Or nothing like that, to where you just was like, let me get one hit. No, 
thank you, Jesus. No. See, that, those last two things happened before I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Once I got filled with the Holy Ghost, that was it. Because I told the Lord, I would rather die than to go back to that. And I really would. Now, what I will say, after 10 years of being in ministry, saved and delivered and so forth, I never went back to drugs, but I did start drinking wine. I started drinking some wine after 10 years because I was going through a thing, started going through some depression again in that marriage. And I started sipping on wine and Tony, it was tasting pretty good. I was feeling pretty merry about it too. And I went through that for five years on and off. And I didn't realize how many of the saints was drinking, you know, <laughs> but see for me, a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. So one, was not enough. I always went to the extreme. So then I found myself addicted to alcohol and I'm trying to figure out how did I get here? And with that, that went on from probably 2011 to 2016 or right in the beginning of 2017. And with that, I actually did try to go to like an AA me meeting like I went to two of them and I just thought to myself and nothing against AA, it just wasn't for me because I felt like the spirit of the Lord was saying, you already know the answer. And so the answer was for me to just yield. So, you know, in the book of James, it said a man is drawn back by his own lustly desire. And so when I began to break the word down, I said, okay, there's no temptation without desire. You, you tempted with what you desire, what you desire. A lot of times that's what the enemy tempt us with. Sometimes he come and tempt us with stuff that we don't want, but usually it's stuff that you want. And so I began to pray and ask God, because that thing, now that was difficult for me, very difficult. That was like teeter totter in and out, stop and go, stop and go. And I was like, oh my God, it got to the place, Tony, where I start having blackouts. Now, at this time, I put the microphone down because I had a heavy conviction. I don't believe in living a double life. The Lord was telling me to get up to come back, to, you know, get back to doing what he called me to do. And I just couldn't do, I couldn't do it. And so I just did what I knew to do before I cried out to the Lord. I prayed, I asked God to help me, to bring me out of this. And with that, now I had to be conscious of when the enemy was bringing temptation to me. So, you know, like the Bible say, when a tempter come, cause he coming, Submit to God, resist the devil, he gonna flee. And you gotta keep doing this. And the more you do it, the more you resist, the more strength you gain. And that's what I began to do. And then, you know, when you do that type of thing, you have people trying to offer you stuff for free. But it ain't, it's just a tactic. It's not for free. It's the enemy trying to hook you. And because I knew, like I was grown in God, like I knew better. You know, I never tried to make an excuse for what I was doing. I said, look, the word is right and I'm wrong. And so what happened was I started fasting, praying, resisting, and I got strong enough where I put the bottle down. And I give those testimonies when I'm preaching. Anybody, you ask anybody about me, they're going to tell you. Yes, yeah, she's going to tell you. She going to tell y'all what she done walked through, what she done been through, what God done brought. Because my, my hope is that my testimony will help somebody else to know that if God did it for me, he the same God, he has not changed. He'll do it for you. And, and I've been free now from drinking seven years. Mm. Now, so for me, I'm not one of those people that can have a glass of wine here and there. Some people can, I can't. Mm, that is powerful. That is powerful because you you spoke a word there because somebody said to me the other day, Jesus turned water into wine. And, and I understand that. And I understand the Bible say, you know, in certain parts, it would say have some wine for your stomach because they water was bad. But, you know, it says don't be a wine bibbler. Don't be a, a drunkard. 
And yes. so you you have to know your limits. And that's the thing. And like you said as well, a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. See, I didn't taste alcohol till I was 22. And I really don't like the taste of it. So I haven't had to struggle with an addiction for it. So I have a drink and I'd be fine because I don't like the taste of it. I'm drinking to be socially, you know, so I'm not the oddball all the time. Uh, Tony too good. He this and that. And everybody having a glass of wine. And I'm the only one sitting there and I don't have a sober story. So they were like, why you all you know? And so I would have me a little glass here and there. And then, you know, I have alcohol at home and I had to realize, that I say, you know what? I done been around the saints who they can't stop at one glass. They have to have them two glasses or three glasses. And I say that could end up becoming an addiction. It could end up being an idol. It could end up separating them from God. And so us knowing our personal limitations and where our heart is at in that time. And so that was very aware. And you spoke something to me too right there. You spoke a word right there. And you flew by it now, but that's a word when you said there is no temptation without desire. Because sometimes I get a DM from a woman who looked like the bottom of a shoe and I don't feel no temptation because I'm like, I'm not attracted to you. You know, you need to work on yourself. But then when you get that message from that woman that's gorgeous, it's like, oh, Lord, not, am I allowed to have friends, Lord? You, you got to think about it. And so that's, but that temptation come from that desire that the devil know you didn't struggle with and dealt with. And that's powerful. And so you were able to break multiple addictions, which now have you wrote a book? Yeah, I well, I wrote, this book is my first book I wrote in 2006, I Survived the Storm. I got it self-published in 2018. I really don't promote the book because I'm really kind of embarrassed about all of the the um, mistakes in the book. You so, mean the but, typos and stuff? Right, like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. We're going to redo it. We're going to redo it. I just want to know if you had ventured that way, but we're going to have to redo that book. We're going to look back into it, get the whole story out there, get the testimony, because you wrote that 2006, published in 2018. We're in 2024. The Lord has done a lot more in you and through you, so we're going to revisit that. Now, today... Now, second book, too, Tony, that's supposed to come out Hopefully at the end of this month, then that's my autobiography about my whole life. It's called Scarred. Mm, I love that. So hopefully when, when that come out, reach out to me and we'll do a little, you know, figure out the shout out and all of that, set that up so some people can get that. But as far as like coaching, are you open to doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with individuals? Absolutely. I took your certification life coach 2021 and I am more than available and willing to do one-on-ones and I do have a website. Awesome. And they can, on the website, there's a contact us page or something where they could write you. And what's the website? It's www.brokenbuthealed.org. I love it. I love it. Now, and have you turned that into a 501c3 yet? I did, but I got to redo some stuff because in the midst of my transition last year, it kind of slipped through the cracks. So I got to go in and get reinstated. Okay. Because that's what I want you to do because that right there will be a powerful foundation, a powerful ministry, just boots on the ground, you are the testament, you know, you, you're a living witness that you can beat addiction. And so my dad helps all of my clients do their LLC or do their incorporation and then do their 501c3. So when you get ready for that, we can help you in that too and just make sure everything is up to par. But that is an amazing story. I know 
we only been doing 30 minutes on these interviews, so it'll be unfair to my other guests for us to go longer. But I could talk to you for hours, and so we might have to do these interviews again. But I, I love the fact that you're sharing your story. You're walking in your purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put your contact, you know, your website in the description box and to everybody who is watching this. And if you have, because a lot of times women reach out to me for their teenage son and, you know, you have been here long enough to be those teenage boys, mom, and you can understand what they're dealing with with that addiction. And it's a lot of moms reach out to me for their sons and daughters who may be 16 to 20 something and they dealing with marijuana or cocaine or alcohol or pills. And I'm like, listen, I, I really, I could talk to them, talk about writing a book or something or helping with their relationship, but I don't know that. So to everybody watching this, who you dealt with addiction, you dealing with addiction, or you got a story similar and you looking to step out there to heal, walk in purpose, please reach out to your sister, Deidre. And Deidre, thank you so much for joining us. And I am wishing you the best. I know you're going to have a lot of folks reaching out and let's be in touch. You got my email because we need to talk about us a movie. TV show something. Come on. Thank you so much for having me, Tony. I appreciate you. God bless you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now, y'all take care. Make sure you join us every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern. If we're not on, that means we're on a little break. The season has passed. So watch the ones that you missed, and I will see you soon.